Let's get into it. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Wow. Um, wow. What a piece of shit. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Chris Mancini. I, actually, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And, you know, one of the things that really helped this film was all of our lowered expectations from something from the DC uh, cinematic universe. Yeah. And um, it's amazing how you're like, oh, yeah, remember what happens when uh, movies get made with competent filmmakers at the helm that aren't shackled and, uh, you know, pushed into doing things they don't want to do? Hmm. How well, about that? Yeah, I know. You have Patty Jenkins who did Monster. And then in that other time, she's also done a lot of TV. She's done Betrayal. She's done The mm -hmm. Killing. So, so the, it's her first feature since Monster. It's her though, first right? feature since Monster. But the TV she's been doing has been well right. produced and well made mm -hmm. as well. So, you know. Uh, I don't want to name names, uh, but Star Trek franchise, when you hire Justin Lin, uh, who's yeah, a Fast and Furious director, he's a guy yeah. that's going to completely miss all the social commentary from the original yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, what do Trek. you think is going to happen? Yeah, you're going to have right. Fast and Furious in space. Right. Do you want them to answer that? Yeah. Are they, you think the studio executives are listening? They're going to call you up next week and like, okay, this and this is what we thought was going to happen. Good point, Graham. What, when you hire Justin Lin, don't be surprised when Justin Lin shows up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was one of those movies that I was really happy to see. I, I thought it struck the right tone. It was lighter than the other DC ones. It was funnier. It was more fun. It was there were definitely some shades of Captain America. You know, the the first Avenger in there for sure. But all in all, I thought it was a solid uh, movie from start to finish, and it was like it's probably the best DC movie oh, for yeah. uh, since like the Batman trilogy. Oh yeah, I mean it's mm -hmm. it's it's. Uh, I was my only nitpick was just the accents. I was like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> I did notice that, like Ludendorff. I'm like, what accent are you? I know, is that German. And I was trying to excuse it for the Amazon women because I'm like, all right, so there's no, we don't know the. <laughs> The mascara maybe has maybe it has its own accent. Yeah, we don't it's a, know it's a an fictional island. island's yeah. accent, and sure. I, I, my guess was they went. We oh. speak many languages. Sure. <laughs> so we and we pick the accents. So we we just float <laughs> accents around, or maybe they're yeah. like, well, Gail Godot has an Israeli one, so let's all try to give them that. Right. That or some version of it. But I let it slide because yeah, that yeah. opening fight sequence where the Amazons are fighting the Germans on the beach. Oh, it's was fantastic! Fucking fantastic! Yeah, it mm -hmm. was fantastic. Laura, what did you think of this movie? I. Uh, yeah, I loved it, and it's it's uh, you know everyone talked about going into it. It's like such a it's like the first uh, film starring a uh, superhero movie, mm -hmm. or the, actually, it's done the best. I guess there have been um, in the past, but uh, watching it, I realized like holy fuck, we don't actually see it that often, and there's so many little moments where I was watching that that sort of uh, leapt out at me. Um, like in in terms of like the feminism, there's like little points across the movie where I'm like, oh, I, I like that. Just even from the very beginning, where um, she has to res Wonder Woman has to rescue the down fighter pilot. She I'm rescues like, the right. man. I she love rescues, that. Rescues and it's and it's it's Chris Pine. Chris Pine. Yeah. Like, Plays the best girlfriend in a move superhero know, movie it was, ever. <laughs> it was it was, I loved that, and it wasn't because I loved it on a lot of levels. First, I was like, I was noticing those things too, like, wow, this is new. This we're not yeah. seeing this. Right. But also, Chris Pine, like, they didn't like make him like. Oh, right. Eh. Exactly. He's a man. He's a, he's he's a spy. But they gave him she, something to do. They gave him something to do, mm -hmm. and then she was. <laughs> So fuck is such a badass. Right. And, yeah. and that was one of the keys to the script and the storytelling is a lot of times these superhero movies, whether male or female, they fall into the trap is everything is about the superhero, where it's Batman, Superman, and every other character is window dressing. Right. So with a movie like this or like the Dark Knight trilogy, you have all these other characters doing different things, and it all supports the overall story that the superhero is in. And that's what I loved about Chris Pine's character, uh, the Steve Trevor the Spy. Um, he had his own things he was doing. He had his own agenda. He was, you know, he had things to do. Uh, not just like, oh, well, what's the superhero doing? I'm just going to be like the sidekick. It was so nice it, to it was see great. a man that was like a fleshed out character. Exactly. For once on film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it finally. Yes. Finally. Yes. Oh, I'm so tired of men just being Jeez. arm candy. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's just it's, it's, it's so hard to watch. So, uh, but it was it was a real joy. It was a real fun movie to watch. Uh, I got a little irritated that uh, there was no 
stinger at the end. I was, yes. like, I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, so we're saving you guys some time right now if you haven't seen the movie yet. Don't wait. There's nothing at the end of the credits. You're like, oh, there's going to be something. There's something at the end of all these movies. Yeah. And sometimes there's more than one. Maybe there's two or three. Maybe Batman will be in the uh, at the end. There's nothing. It yeah. just ends. Well, what else, Laura, that you were saying? There were several moments that stood out. Uh, there was the, uh, in one scene, uh, Chris Pine <laughs> or Steve Trevor. <laughs> and always Steve Trevor is like, you know, you need to wait here. And then Wonder Woman's like, um, no, I do what I want. And just yeah, like yeah, walked yeah. off. And you and that's one of another moment where yeah. you just re- like, I'm just so used to, you know, sort of guys taking charge of movies and like protecting a woman. And you're like, oh, okay, well, that's nice. He's looking out for her. But in this case, she's like, fuck that. I'm going to, I'm going to do what right. I need to do. I'm a superhero. Yeah. I liked the way the lasso worked too. Like, oh, I can't yeah. tell you that. I can't tell you that. And they put the last one. I'm a s- s- spy. Like, it, yeah. And then, okay. All right. Now, uh, it also was a great way to get exposition out of the way. Like, if you didn't know what what, what right. he was doing there, what was there, and it was uh, it's it served a purpose and it was fun. He's um, so funny. Like Chris Pine was this super is his, charming and this and is funny. his best popcorn movie uh, that yeah. he's done. Now, like Hell or High Water was a drama, but when you when you compare this to like the Star Trek movies and stuff. And the uh, the popcorn stuff that he does, this is by far his his best role. What else were you going to say, Laura? Because because like, no, like the the lasso of truth. Just uh, when he's when he's like got it, he's like oh, it's getting it's, it's really hot and uncomfortable. Yeah. Like you could you could see him like fighting. Like I don't want to say it, and then he reveals the truth, and you could see on his face like what did I what did I just do? Like. <laughs> I just thought those like there was a lot of moments like that were just really like funny and charming, but also like they moved the story along and right. uh, yeah, it was it was good. There were so many cool moments too. Like I mean, this this is in the trailer, but her like having to wear a dress in that p- time period. Yeah, her just being like, "What is this? What is this? I can't fight in this. How do you fight in this?" Mm-hmm. Like it was, I I thought it was really cool. It was it was good origin story. Yeah. And it, it, it harkened to me of like when Thor, the first Thor movie where he came to the earth because she sort of liked that. She's she's not a human that got special power. She right, right. she was born in a different place and has special power. So seeing her interact. Related to the Greek gods. Yeah, related mm-hmm. to the Greek gods. So seeing her interact was really, I was like, oh, cool. And it was such great commentary. I mean, her, that whole storyline, her storyline and specific to this movie is, and we'll get into more of it with the spoiler up, but because I don't want to. Reveal the yeah, ending. There's, there's stuff we'll talk about in the spoiler for sure. But but it's like it was such commentary on <laughs> humans and just yeah. how I mean there's the line where um the world of man doesn't deserve you. Right, right. And it right. was like, mm-hmm. wow, that was awesome. And well, even yeah, because so they set up that she's basically lived on what how do you say the island again? Therm- Themyscira. Themyscira. So she's essentially grown up uh, without ever having seen a man or the rest of civilization. So on this island, they're just like training like fucking badasses. And uh, from my understanding, like all the women in th- that were like on the island and and doing these stunts were actual athletes. Oh yeah, being they had athletes. To have been. Yeah, they they're fantastic, but also extremely athletic. So you have you have Wonder Woman that gets off the island and is sort of like discovering the world for the very first time, and like with no pre- preconceived notions other than oh, they don't deserve you, and uh, and they're like a warlike people. But other than that, it's yes. like she's looking at society and everything that's happened. Like even the line about like, what do you do? Like, oh, I'm a secretary. What does that mean? Like, oh, I go whatever he wants. Like, oh, where I come, that's slavery. Sounds like, like slavery. <laughs> <laughs> the secretary goes, huh. Yeah, I like yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and it also, it, it there's just like little great moments like that. Like you see it like uh, – even even part of like the Superman mythology, where it's like you know, stranger in a strange land, where like I don't, this is all new to me. I'm not from around here, and there's so much comedy to mine there. And there they did, they did it right, and they didn't overplay it. It was just the right amount, and it wasn't like you know, stupid obvious jokes that you would think. So it was it was a really well balanced. Uh, it, the tone didn't go all over the place. It was a, just a really well um, crafted. It, uh, ma- it, ma- it, it so much sense, uh, you know. I-, I loved, I loved all of that. I loved because 
It was the best Marvel movie DC has made. <laughs> yeah, no shit. No shit. Because uh, a friend asked me, was it, I said, yeah, it was good. They go, was it Marvel good? And I yeah. said, yeah, it's better than some Marvel movies for me. It's better than Iron Man 2. It's better than Ant-Man. It's, it was really... I like this better than Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which I didn't fully enjoy. I don't oh, know if wow. that if I don't know if everyone's going to hate me for that. I didn't not I mean it was enjoyable, but I like I found myself getting a little bored. Uh in certain parts. So this one I like yeah, it I had never got made, bored. Yeah, I didn't get bored. It moved along uh and it wasn't a sequel too. So Right. And, and like I said, I think we had such lower expectations. I think that helps the movie tremendously. I'll say this, I was not a fan um, we didn't even. We weren't even on, sold on the trailers. I wasn't sold on the trailers mm-hmm. because I was like, "It's DC. I just can't. I can't get excited for a DC movie I, unless it unless it was the three Batman movie that Nolan did. I can't." And the trailers too. It also showed a kind of a different tone of the film than what actually the film was. As usual, the trailer yeah. wasn't completely representative of the film. But also, like, I wasn't sold on the Gail Godot casting. Right, but you and are now. I am absolutely now. Yeah, and and. My girlfriend hasn't seen it. You know yet. who isn't sold on the Gal Gadot casting? Lebanon. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they banned it because she served in the Israeli Hezbollah. army. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two countries still officially at war, still... so no Wonder Woman in Lebanon. Nope. Um, but like, I remember. So, so my girlfriend was a huge uh, Xena Warrior Princess fan, and she was she was mad at the casting because she was like, it should the woman should look like that. That's how Wonder Woman is often drawn. Okay, is like. Lucy Lawless, like mm-hmm. strong, athletic. Amazon princess. Amazon princess, beautiful. Gail Godot's, you know, looks too much like a runway model. That was my worry. Man, she was great. Like, I, yeah. I was. She brought it. She brought it. She was a badass. And those opening, you know, Laura, you're talking about the opening scene where we go to Themyscira and you, it's just women training. Yeah. Fighting, right. fight training. That's all they're doing. Mm-hmm. I would join CrossFit if it was like Themyscira. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I. Or if there's like a girl summer camp and that's mm-hmm. what the training would like, I took archery and yeah. I went to camp. I did archery, but if it was like archery on horseback, uh, yeah, that shit. would be pretty cool. And then the poor, I felt a little sorry for the uh, the child actresses that played her. Like, I'm sure the direction was just try to match her accent as an adult. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, it was cool too because it was it was about. You know, they were training. It was, I was, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think mm-hmm. everyone should study martial arts, but that's, the, to me, I For was like. For the coming apocalypse, it makes sense. It's going to, you're going to need it. Zombies um, are robots. One of them's going to take over. <laughs> Fuck, but if it's robots, then what? How much training are you gonna, do you need to, like, defeat a robot? Sorry, this is a little off topic, yeah. I guess. No, no, I'm sorry, right but, like, I just realized, like. You need, you need like, IS training. Because they're, what is, what's IS? <laughs> yeah, you need IS. Uh, what is yeah. that? I don't even know what that is. IS, that's uh, a computer support. Oh, okay. Yeah. You need... All right. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can, like, train, but then you also need, like, a guy that, or girl, sorry. And a web designer. A fucking Wonder Woman that also yeah. knows, like, <laughs> software and shit. Right. <laughs> yeah, it Wonder was, Programmer. It, yeah. It, it was cool. Just as a as a superhero movie, I liked it. As a comic book movie, really good. As an origin story, really good. But then you add all of the facts that we have not seen this. Yeah. Somebody, I forget who, but somebody tweeted, this woman tweeted, now I understand why white males have are so overconfident. <laughs> saw that. After watching Wonder Woman, I want to yeah. go beat everyone's ass. And I was like, <laughs> that's hilarious. And I was talking about this. My girlfriend and I were talking about this. And I said, yeah, you know, I've talked. we've talked about this before, but... Growing up as a white male or just as a guy, there's there was so many heroes for me to look to. Yeah. I mean, my heroes were Captain Kirk. It was Steve McGarrett. Athletes, Muhammad Ali. I mean. Well, the comics, too. The comics. It was, you know, 90% male. Power Man, Iron Fist. Yeah. yeah. All these things. Spider-Man, Spider-Man Batman, all Superman. Of them. And actual, like Green I said, Arrow, and even athletes. Green Lantern. I looked up to. The WNBA didn't exist when I was a kid, you know. Does it so, still exist? Yeah, we go to games all the time, Chris. Yeah, you have yeah. a daughter, you should take her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's that's the other thing, too. I, I go to the WNBA now because, first of all, tickets are cheap. You can sit like 15 <laughs> rows off the floor. I mean, we were seven rows off the floor for like 30 bucks. It was fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a guy... Never wait in the in the men's room. <laughs> it's, it's, it's never wait. There's a lot of perks. There's a lot of perks. Mm-hmm. We can sit close. And then I'm watching, and I'm like, these women are amazing athletes. Yeah. And, you know, I'm looking at young kids in the audience, a lot of young girls, but even some young boys who are looking up to yeah. 
these female athletes right. because they're amazing and should be mm-hmm. they're amazing athletes and should be looked at. You're more feminist than me. I've not I don't even I probably shouldn't admit this. I have never been to a WNBA game. I I'm telling you, you they're amazing. I gotta go. I, when I hear a lot of women like, "Oh, you white male oppressor," I'm yeah. like, "And how many WNBA games you've gone?" Oh, Boo! I don't go. You pull yeah. the WNBA yeah, yeah, yeah. card. Oh, like... so you use it just to play the card? <laughs> yeah, that's why. I, that's why I did USO shows in war zones so I can talk shit to conservatives who say you're not an American. No, oh, I've been to Afghanistan and Iraq. Have you? <laughs> I've told jokes in Iraq. <laughs> yeah, I've told jokes in Iraq. Well, you have an American Eagle yeah. sticker on your Ford. Um, Wait, no, I, that I was funny. An, this past and I went to an M- WNBA <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I was like, I got us tickets to New Kids on the Block, and I turned my girlfriend onto the WNBA. And she was like, so, Graham, you're a better woman than I am? Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. Um, but that's but going back to that, yeah. I, I recognize that oh, every, I, there were so many – I mean, it just – Guys on TV looked like me, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like uh, Tom Brady. He, if I'm a young, if I'm, if I'm well. seven year old Graham, he looks like me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so now to see that that young girls have this to look up to, yeah, is a is a really is a really cool and important thing. My only fear is they play. <laughs> A bunch of ads for the army and stuff, and I'm like, oh, so now they're going to train young women to be all pro-war, <laughs> right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we're already not enough. We're we're only in what war in seven or eight countries right now, um, but so yeah, that was it was really it was powerful on that level, and also too, Chris, you you talked about the the you know the fish out of water, yes, that has happened since the first Superman movie with Christopher right. Reeve or whatever. Mm. All those jokes. The, my my theater I was in wasn't packed, but it was fairly full. Mm-hmm. It was getting laughs. Everything yeah. was getting yeah. laughs. The jokes were landing. For sure. Mm-hmm. And Very Chris funny. Pine was great at that. So good. That's another thing that the trailer did. And, and uh, granted, it's difficult to get a, a joke without the context to work in a trailer if it's not a comedy. Mm-hmm. Where, but uh, And they didn't in the trailer. But, you know, in the context... Uh, these jokes worked and they also because it wasn't like this dark brooding movie that they tried to shoehorn some jokes into <laughs> Suicide Squad uh, but uh, it was actually a- an even tone all the way through so they worked and the jokes worked better so I was really happy to see I thought Patty Jenkins did a fantastic job directing this film I have a question did you take your daughter to see this I did yes and what was her reaction she really liked it for sure now um She's actually grown up with like a little bit more of the options as far as like female leads and characters on television. Yeah. And one of the reasons is because of Disney Channels. There's a lot of female leads in a lot of these shows uh, because they're targeting specifically that age group of like, you know, it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. She's starting to age out of them now. But, you know, back when we were kids, that never existed. There weren't there wasn't a channel full of yeah. shows with female leads that right. were you know, that were in them. So So is this kind of normal for her? So, like so, is seeing this sort of mind blowing or is she just like, Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, she was more like, Oh yeah, that was cool. That's it wasn't nice. yeah, it that's yeah, good. It that's is. What it, yeah, it is. Be, right? it, it wasn't like it didn't like take her by surprise or cut her off guard and like, oh wow, there should be more female superheroes. She just you know, felt like this this was just a really good movie. Does she watch Supergirl on TV? Yes. She she watches Supergirl and then also uh, the Justice League, the cartoons that they used to have that are were actually really good. There was a lot of um, female characters in those too. They really um, mm-hmm. uh, showcase the female characters as well. So that, that that I never thought of it that way, but that is a good thing that yeah. this wasn't surprising for her to, to see like a movie like this. So yeah. She doesn't so, want to smash the patriarchy. You're no, not. <laughs> yet. yet, not yet, not yet. But <laughs> but well, I'm sure she will. <laughs> When she gets to college, yeah, she'll want to smash the patriarchy and blame you and your wife for everything. Yes, um, he didn't take what, me to what, see Wonder Woman that's enough. What, yeah, <laughs> that's what having children is all about. <laughs> They're cute as kids, and then they yeah, hate you when they get yeah. older. It's good stuff. Um, I tried first, kid. Hey.